So far, it's been like 36 comics, and I wanted to get a perspective, A, from someone on the West Coast about everything that happened last year and where things are at now, and a straight-up writer as opposed to mm-hmm. as opposed to stand-up, as much <laughs> as I love talking to stand-ups. <laughs> so that's what I wanted to talk to you. So could you explain a little bit how you, because um, I know a lot of people, myself included, are trying to want to understand the jump from like going to school for, for TV writing, getting a job as a writer's assistant, and, and then actually being staffed on a show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't, I did go to school for, you know, film and TV, but I don't think that you have to. I mean, it's not like you can show your degree to anybody and they're going to care and hire you because you have it, but it might be where you, you know, practice your craft and it might be where you develop your voice, but probably not in, you know, that age 17 to 21. I mean, that's really just going to come from, from life experience. Um, so I'd say go, go do it if you want to. It's certainly fun to, to go to film school, but I, don't, I would never tell anyone, like, you must do that if you want to, you know, work in entertainment. Um, the way I started was, I mean, I, I literally was, like, at lunch with a friend in New York, like, just after graduating NYU, and she was like, oh, I booked a ticket to L.A. in, like, three weeks forever, uh, do you want to come? And, you know, it's the kind of decision you can make when you are 21. And yeah. just I, I agreed and booked my ticket that day and just came out. Actually, I moved into my apartment in LA day one of the 2007 writer strike. It's a very bizarre time to land uh, in LA, but weirdly a blessing in disguise because everybody, like I knew for a fact that every writer wasn't working. So... I knew that they had to like go to coffee with me and like, you know, like I I asked everyone I knew to, you know, just introduce me to, you know, anyone you might know in LA. And I just met a lot of really cool, interesting people. And also I think during a strike, there's just like a a camaraderie that starts to emerge where people are just a little bit more likely to help people just because there's the spirit is there. Um, So it was weirdly a good time. And I met a lot of interesting writers, including um, one who ended up, uh, finally, not immediately, but I'd say like a couple years later, I just kept in touch with him. Uh, and he, he hired me as his writer's assistant on uh, Terra Nova, which is the dinosaur time travel show that came and went real quick. I don't know if you remember it. Of course, of course I remember it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, yeah, then I just sort of, I worked with him, uh, you know, subsequent shows and uh, did like a development cycle with him where he sold a pilot. That show didn't go to series, um, but, you know, we sort of, knew that eventually when he had the thing that he could staff me, he would. And, you know, I was very lucky that that first thing happened to be Narcos. I love that. I forget who I heard it from, but they said that uh, in a drama room, the comedy is free, which I sort of love because it's like, you're not, you're not trying to, like you're making each other laugh and have a good time just for the sake of enjoying your coworkers. Whereas I, you know, comedy rooms are not all bad. Uh, I've heard some, you know. In a comedy room, the drama is free. And yeah. Also takes a toll on everyone. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's no one you know jockeying for for position. Nobody is trying to out funny the other. You're just trying to make each other laugh because it's fun. Um, so in, culturally speaking, I think the drama room is is a pretty enjoyable one to be in. That's interesting. So it's less competitive. So I hear. I mean, I've never been in a comedy room, um, but I have to imagine that you know because laughter is the product. It's just it's going to have a mm. different vibe in a comedy room and laughter is so subjective that's yeah. interesting right and i and i always heard that's why dramas do better overseas because you can put subtitles under a bunch of explosions but you can't like show them totally totally and and just funny is so cultural that you know it, it's i don't necessarily know that a particular sense of humor can can travel well and i'm always curious the ones that do you know like there i think like everybody loves raymond there's like a version of that in every country but you know that's universal whatever's Wait, going a on version there. of the format or a right so it's like not that. they don't necessarily i think they like go around and they they remake it in each country and as, that's actually probably why it works because right. they they tailor it for the culture and they, they take whatever's, you know, at the root of that show, but then kind of make it bespoke for, you know, for Russia. It's I think there's nuanced. a Russian show. So like in yeah. Italy, it's like, oh, I live with my parents. They're like, no, that's normal. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's not a premise. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Comedy is the most subjective art form that I can think of. Actually, last night was the reopening of some comedy clubs in the city. 
Um, and it was like coming back to camp or something because everyone, it was the exact same lineups. Of, like literally every single comic was the same as March 10th, 2020. Um, but everyone was like a little worse for wear. And it was very much like, how'd you spend your year? Da, 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 da. It's not the same energy when you're in McCarran. Totally. I, I went to one at the Magic Castle where it's like a, it was like a drive-in style where you just stay in your car and they give you these like noisemakers to, I guess, proxy for applause and laughter, which is just, I, I really feel for the comics who had to be up there and they, they just have to, I think one comic um, commented that it sounds like pigeons flying away every time, like he, that's how he knows a joke works, if, if it sounds like pigeons are flying away. Well, also the 17 year cicadas are coming to New York now. Oh, so like talk excellent. about literally hearing crickets. <laughs> no matter what you say, you bomb harder than ever. Everything you said, I have some follow-up questions. That's really yeah. interesting to me. A, did you pick it at all for the writer's strike? And do you want to explain broad stroke what it is for people that weren't alive in 2000? Well, I wasn't in the guild yet. I, I ju you know, just a guy who showed up to LA. But weirdly, I, I did. And all writers were just, on the picket line together. So it just kind of felt like that's just, oh, I want to be part of whatever that energy is. Just, I think back then it was, they were saying that streaming was very funny to think about now. They were saying streaming is just promotional. And you know, the now real, we're saying that. yeah, they were saying real shows are of course just broadcast and you know, all that streaming stuff, there's no money in it. So we don't <laughs> think we should be allowed to have any revenue from it. Um, so, you know, I think, Retrospect uh, tells us that the writers might have been onto something in 2007. They were still arguing over DVD sales then, which again, very funny to think about now. Um, like that was probably something we could have let go. Uh, yeah. But you don't, you know, you don't know until you know. Right. And Blu-ray, we're still fighting for those. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> go from culinary school to writing. Um, because the interview on you. Jen Danielson was a producer at SNL, and now she's at Comedy Central, and she brought me in. I think that would be harder than writing. Uh, working in working a kitchen. Working in a kitchen, yeah. I've done both. Um, <laughs> and both SNL and working in a French kitchen <laughs> are both really scary, <laughs> but eventually pay off. <laughs> so Narcos. Yeah. I love Narcos. What is the writer's room like there? So it, w it was a sh strange situation also because that was, I think at the time, Netflix only had Orange is the New Black and House of Cards. It was like, that's all Netflix was as far as original series. So when it started, it was just like, we don't know what we are. We don't know what this is. I mean, they still thought it was, they actually, and again, this is maybe more of like a strike, like studio writer union issue. They were acting as though Netflix shows were web series, which is hilarious. Um, and, you know, attempting to pay, pay us that way right. as well. Like this web uh, series is the same. Exactly. As Narcos. This and Narcos, exactly You're the same. You're getting paid the same, yeah. yeah. <laughs> when we started, I mean, there were six writers that showed up day one, and it was just like, just, um, you know, make sure Pablo Escobar shows up somewhere and, you know, let us know when it's done. It was a very, like, Wild West, pretty hands-off, you know, new, new form of storytelling. So, I mean, of course, we wanted to do it as authentically as possible, and we had... Um, Javier Pena and Steve Murphy, the two the two DEA agents who, um, you know, are, are the protagonists of season one and two. Uh, we had like those guys like actually in the room with us telling That's us their so stories. Um, and you know, there's it, we had the benefit of you know this is history, but it's modern history. So you know, from the '90s onward, there's just tons and tons of news footage and, mm. and so many books and, and just so many like articles to to pull from. So we had almost too much information. I mean, there was tons of stuff we just, we didn't use um, just because there wasn't enough time. I remember when that show came out, it got a lot of attention for its authenticity, right? Because so much of mm -hmm. it was straight up in Spanish. And at the time it was like, mm -hmm. wait, isn't everyone just has British accents and anything that takes place? Yeah, yeah. anything before, you know, like 1901, just put, put a British accent, any country. Yeah, ancient Rome, space, yeah. whatever. <laughs>